Hi, it's Greg from Curry Country Living. And we're off to see if we can capture another windmill blade today. It's minus 28 according to the forecast. I wasn't able to line up Brother Mike as he has the bus this morning, but I do have a co-pilot. My daughter Jasper is out for a couple of days and she's agreed to drive. I have uh, set the the distance away from the home point on my DJI Maverick, so the plan today is to... All right, so in the last episode with Brother Mike, uh, we weren't able to follow the blade all the way through the Valley of Larimer because I had a setting in my DJI drone that limited it, it to a certain distance away from the home point. So I'm going to change that this morning. Um, George has given me a call and he is, uh, they're removing that last blade and they're going to be going through the valley here shortly. Minus 26 this morning. So hopefully the, the battery on the drone is going to get me through. Anyways, on the setting, I've got the iPhone hooked up to my uh, transmitter. I got the drone on and I'm going to go into settings. And on the settings... I hit those three buttons to here and there's a whole bunch of different places you can go but I'm going to go to safety and if you go down to safety you can see that my maximum altitude is 1640 feet which is which is lots I don't need that much but that's what caused me the trouble before was this 4854 feet so I'm going to bump that to 12 well, I've got it to 13,000 um, 13,000 feet which should be lost to get us from one side of the valley to the other and then this altitude is just to return to home I'm just going to leave it at 328 feet and uh, I believe I have my daughter Jasper piloting me this morning and we'll see if we can follow the the blade from one side of the river the east side all the way up to the other side so the plan today is to hopefully follow the blade from the east side of Larivere all the way through Larivere to the west side and uh, land the drone on the other side of the valley. So do you have any comments on today's adventure? Uh, nope, just happy to be here. Tell people what you do, Jasper. What do you do when you're not co-piloting your car for your dad? Uh, I'm a rec facilitator and a mom of two. Where? Uh, Fairview Personal Care Home. And my children are with Grandma right now. So Grandma is participating. It's hot. It's so hot. <laughs> right now we're just headed into the valley, the Pemina Valley. Uh, again, actually the uh, car is saying it's about minus 30. So the biggest concern I have about that, Jasper, is the fact that my battery life may be deteriorated because I only have about 25 minutes on a good day. Are you getting the rainbow right now? I am getting. Isn't that a nice rainbow? It's a sun dog. Well, sun dog, because it's minus 30. Yeah. So this is a little bit northwest of Larivere, just coming down from the Curry Country Living Homestead. It's a little bit ice fog, and George had mentioned that maybe the ice fog might slow them down when they hit Manitou. But a lot of times people will talk about the weather difference between the top of the valley and the bottom of the valley, wind being the biggest thing. But it was minus 28 at home when we left, and at the bottom of the valley, it's showing minus 34. So minus 34 from 28 is a six degree difference in a 300 foot lower. The valley is 300 feet deep and there's a six degree difference, which is pretty substantial sometimes. The big thing about the valley though, is you never get the wind that you get up on top. And right now there is no wind good for the guys doing the blade because they don't want any wind at all but there it looks like there's quite a bit of ice fog coming up so hopefully that doesn't cause problems. Up on Larivere quite a bit noticeably foggier down here could be interesting from a drone standpoint I'll get lost in that uh, ice fog pretty quick and from a 300 foot blade aspect uh, it makes it a little more challenging but as the sun comes up it is burning it off you can see the sun at the top of the east valley burning off some of that ice fog as we head into La Riviere to the east side of the valley to set up for the blade coming through when George called about 10 minutes ago they were at Darlington just coming to the top of the east hill at La Riviere. 
opposite way of which way the blade will be going. All right, Jasper, I think it might almost be showtime. You think those are flashing lights? That video is taking us all the time. Yeah. Oh, okay. You got your seatbelt on? George, Jasper has her seatbelt on. You may have to turn this down because the fan will pick up the noise. Uh, yep, that's them. So I'm going to get the drone out. Describe what you're seeing, Jasper. It's a house. I'm seeing a house. A little teeny house. <laughs> Are these the guys that we're waiting for? Viridian. Yeah. I hate to say it, but those aren't the guys that we're waiting for. I figured the house. Oh, there's another pilot truck coming though. Okay, so. So I'm not sure what's going on. This is actually drone. This is the drone taping me right now. And uh, we have another pilot truck coming. I'm not sure whether it's George or not, but we'll find out. Are you gonna honk his horn? I think that was them, Jasper. He waved. Did he wave? He did. Okay, so I'm gonna put this drone down. I've got 89% power. It's minus 27. The ice fog has lifted a certain amount. And I'm going to put this drone down. We'll see what happens. I see a... All right, so there's a second pilot truck coming now. And second and third pilot truck coming now. You should be able to see them in the drone here shortly. In the drone shot. So there's one pilot truck going by. Oh, there's the blade, Jasper. Oh, it's so cool. It's huge. It is very big. Okay, so you take the vehicle and start going out that way. And then just stop at the stop sign. Don't go, this is close enough. Wow. Looks like a huge ice cream cone. 300 feet long. And we're gonna try and follow this all the way through. So like I say, when you, when it's safe to do so, you can. Wow. And that's just one? That's just one. Okay, you just start falling whenever you feel safe. So we're going down the valley now. Jasper's behind the back pilot truck. And it's really interesting when they go around the curve here. So they make the blades in Manitoba and then they ship no, them? No, the blades no. are made in Malaysia. These blades are made in Malaysia and then they're shipped over to a uh, port in St. Louis and then they're put on a barge to Cherokee, oh I can't remember, Cherokee, somewhere in the States and then they're put on these trucks and brought up. So I think this truck driver, he actually uh, got a hold of me on uh, YouTube, I think he's from Texas. So. Just stay, you're at the perfect distance, Jasper. 
So this is uh, the curves going in into the Pemina Valley. dark. I have to bump my ISO out. Now it's a sharp curve going into Larabier. And apparently that little truck in the back, Jasper, the, they, can, they can do a little bit of steering, the, the back truck. So it takes up a lot of real estate when they go around these corners, so, so that's why they need so many pilot trucks. As they make that corner, headed towards Larivier. I wonder the cost of one blade would be. You know, I don't know what the cost would be. Maybe these guys might know, but... Um, what would the total cost of that blade coming all the way from Malaysia, being shipped, and then hitting St. Louis, and then going to Cherokee, and then being put on a truck and taken all the way to Jenner, Alberta. So now we're headed towards Larivier. And I just switched the drone to sports mode, which means I can fly a little quicker but all the controls are a lot more sensitive for some reason I'm getting a little bit of what's the temperature of the vehicle say Jasper minus 31 minus 31 as they go through the valley valley for you American folk that's minus 31 degrees Celsius I uh, think of it I'll try and post what that is in Fahrenheit Either way, it's friggin' cold. I told George I would possibly take some still shots, but I'm not gonna have time to do stills and video. So you can see all the traffic stopped here at the bottom as it goes by Larivier. My drone right now is showing 5,000 feet away because we were at uh, the top of the hill this time and not the bottom. But I should be good till 12,000 feet, just past 6,000 feet away from our starting point, Jasper. So now we'll follow this thing. goes over the Pemina River. There'll be a bridge that they'll be crossing here shortly. And on the other side of the bridge you'll see Holiday Mountain Ski Resort. And we were there yesterday, Jasper. We had a great time skiing yesterday, didn't we? We did. It was very fun. So you've been skiing, you're piloting me for droning. Lots of bonding time. Yeah. So this is where my drone stopped last time. So far, so good. It's letting me follow. But 60% uh, power on the battery. These guys must be moving. How fast are you going, Jasper? Because I'm having a hard time keeping up. Okay, do you want me to slow down? Nope, you want you to stay okay. close to them. I'm pushing, the drone says it's doing 37 mile an hour and I'm not gaining on them. I'm doing 50. You're doing 50? I'm almost, yeah, 50 miles per hour. So now we're going up the West Hill on number three highway. They've slowed down quite a bit, which is fine. And then you can pull into the first country road on your left-hand side when you get there. So we were asked to pass it, so we're passing it going up the hill, Jasper. 
Shit, I'm at 11,000 feet. You can't go past 13 or my drone's going to stop. So, what would you like me to do? Oh, cancel. Do you want me to... Uh, you to get into the yard? Matisse's yard? Yeah, the drone is, is uh, telling me it needs battery power, so... Damn it. We'll just stay, we'll go to Matisse's. Okay, and pull into the lane on this side when you get up there. Pull into this lane here. Yeah. I can't get into that lane. Keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, pulling up over here. Shit, the drone, and we're gonna have to turn around and go back, Jasper. Okay. The drone maxed out at 13,000 feet. The battery's telling me it's low. Jasper's gonna pull in right here, and then she's going to go back so I can get my drone if I can keep it near that quick. Good job, Jasper. Good job. Right now. right now, we're going back to get my drone and passing these guys. Holy crap! Okay, I don't know where my drone is, Jasper, so we're going to have to keep like, going. I can't see the car yet. Okay, we're getting close, so... Is it on the highway? Can you stop? Oh, it's right there. Okay, can you just pull it to the side here? Yeah. Put your flashers on. Oh, I don't know what those are, but... Can you put the flashers on first? Okay, just stop here. Ah, I hate this. It should be all right here, though. Where is it? There it is. Okay, I'm happy. Oh. Anytime you get your drone back when something like that happens, you're happy. So, ah. all right, all right, Captain. good job. All right, so now you can drive normal. So what happened there? So again, I miscalculate, miscalculated. Just had my drone crash inside the car. I maxed out at 13,000 feet, that's over two miles. I would have thought, next time, I just put it on unlimited. Because the drone, again, stopped flying after it hit that 13,000 foot mark, which was only three quarters of the way up the hill. The battery, which was at 49%, wanted to come back home to where we took off because it was so cold at minus 30 going through the valley. But the drone, um, I, I overrid the battery return to home function. Jasper was able to find a place to turn around and take me back to the drone where we parked at the side of the road. And uh, yeah, so that was quite the adventure, Jasper. Super fun. Mm -hmm. So anyways, DJI Mavic Air 2. Um, yeah, another, another successful flight.
Frank for watching that. And as always, if you enjoyed that video, consider giving me a thumbs up, subscribing to Curry Country Living, or leaving some comments in the comment section below. The uh, moving of the blade, this is the second time I've done it. It uh, just blows me away the size of those things and what's involved to get them moved. If any of you guys know what it costs to get a blade from Malaysia made, shipped all the way to Jenner, Alberta, even how many miles that is, I could do a rough calculation, but it's got a shitload of miles over the ocean, through uh, barges, on a truck, and, uh, and then on a crane to get up to the windmill. So I'd like to thank Jasper, my co-pilot, for co-piloting today. Minus 30, what did we say? Minus 32 going through the valley. It's what it is right now. The uh, drone, um, I maxed out the distance again. Second time I made that mistake. Maybe the third time, George, but I think we're done with the blades. Anyways, thanks for George for setting us up again. As always, stay safe, and we'll catch you next time.